welcome back to AIC. Um, I'm shooting another video which is actuarial science related. So I hope my actuaries or my aspiring actuaries are on this channel right now looking forward to what I'm going to talk about. So yeah, um, I am going to discuss, hold on, okay. Okay, so I'm going to discuss the two preliminary exams for actuarial science, at least for the American um, actuarial science system or the Society of Actuaries. Um, so I'm going to talk about two exams, exam P and exam FM. I've taken both of them, I've passed both of them, and I'm just going to give you guys a brief overview of what, of what the two exams entail and my personal experience with them. Um, so exam P, exam P was the first exam that I took and um, I didn't pass it on my first attempt but I'll tell you now exam P for me personally was kind of my least favorite um, so I took longer to actually study for it because I didn't pass it the first time around and exam P is also three hours, both exams are three hours long um, but exam P has 30 questions and in exam P uh, it's more about probabilities so it's the probability exam um, in this exam they focus heavily on knowing your probabilities knowing your sets and just knowing how to analyze that so one thing about actuarial exams is that they test for depth it's one thing to know like oh yeah I know how to double integrate um, but not knowing when you actually need to do that and how to do that effectively because another thing is that these questions most of the times are very complex to an extent where you need, really need to know how to solve a problem effectively you see a question and you know how to solve it instead of trying to figure out how do I solve this how do I go about solving this so that's the most tricky part about actual exams in general so yeah on that note so exam P or prob the probability exam test heavily on probabilities and i think for me i would say it was also calculus intensive you need you need to know your calculus you need to know double integrations you need to know how to graph um you know functions you need to know um der derivatives you need to know sets you need to know basically you kind of need to also know a lot of like logic i know mathematics a lot of logic so in probabilities you deal with a lot of logic and you are going to encounter a lot of those problems as well in the exam in terms of content wise so yeah it's probabilities it sets and probabilities is very is very wide like the concept of probability is very broad um it's just not like you know areas and like trying to find the probability of something through areas or like discrete probability like the probability like topic is very wide and they break break that down in the exam as well so you have like continuous probabilities you have like discrete probabilities you have um you know insurance whatever whatever probabilities i uh, yeah i i took that last year but it was at the beginning um i still know a lot of things but i can't really talk like on top of my head um the exact topics that are covered but yeah um Another reason why I took probability first was because I've done a class on probabilities um, and my advisor told me that, you know, you should take this exam. They cover 80% or even more than that um, of what we did in class. So I was like, oh yeah, sure. So what I did was I just, I bought coaching actuaries. So coaching actuaries, I've been using coaching actuaries to study for my exams because you study for these exams independently. They are not like part of your major or part of your college courses. At least that's what it is at my school. So it's like taking up an extra class, but even more demanding because you are doing it on your own and you don't really have a lot of external help. Um, so yeah, I took it and when I bought coaching actuaries, I decided to, to, to just buy the adapt part, which is the part where you practice for exams or you do quizzes so in the adapt part there's no learning you just do exams and quizzes and i thought this will prepare me well especially uh because i've done the stuff in class so yeah i started doing um the questions and i think i reached level four before i took my exam 
and because they normally recommend that you reach level seven for you to be 90 percent to be 90 percent sure that you'll pass the exam but i've reached level four i remember school has just started because i took it in september um school has just started i was feeling a bit overwhelmed i was going through like um internship interviews and everything was just a lot and that was my first exam so just like that whole commitment and dedicating three hours a day to just that like it's really it really weighs heavily on your um brain as well like just practicing or doing an exam for three hours straight because you have to be mindful of your time and making sure you finish on time so i was on level four before i took the exam and i took the exam and when i took it i failed it and i was kind of devastated because i was like okay you dedicate so much time to one exam to a point where sometimes i gave up my shifts at work as well because i was really willing to put in um a lot of effort um in this exam um but then i talked to my mentor and it was like it's completely normal to fail an actuarial exam a lot of people fail at least one exam in their actuarial exam taking journey so i shouldn't feel less or feel like giving up and i really wanted this so i knew that i wasn't gonna give up but it's just the motivation i needed to get that motivation to actually keep going so the first time around the second time around i decided to buy both learn and adapt yeah so with the learning um experience i think i got to really learn a lot it wasn't just about okay i need to pass this exam but it was also about i really need to know what i'm doing i really need to learn the concepts and i really need to know how to apply them so the learning part really helped me a lot in just like figuring out what this exam is about and really understanding in depth what like the concepts and like the mathematics and everything behind it so this was a really really um wonderful point for me um in the exam taking process um yeah another thing is that like i said it's three hours and it's 30 questions you go in the exam room you they give you the computer and yeah they sit you at some computer and then you start taking your exam um if you want to go to the bathroom you can go to the bathroom but they don't stop your time so you are using your own time if you decide to go out of the room so use those three hours wisely yeah i will say exam f and yeah my exam p result was like a seven but like the time okay so when i passed exam p like i felt like i was really flourishing throughout the exam like i finished i think 30 minutes early i thought it wasn't bad maybe i've just prepared really enough because the second time around i reached a level seven and above so i felt really confident about it but i was hoping that i'll get like an eight or above but i got a seven but at least I passed. Yeah. With Exam FM, um, I've done a lot of financial math classes and I really liked the concerts. I loved the exam. I just enjoyed it. It's challenging as well. Don't get me wrong. But I think because I'm more passionate about those kind of things like financial mathematics. Um, so with FM, it consists like it consisted mainly of like annuities so like an annuities and immediates and just knowing like really really understanding when to use that in a problem and loans and bonds and immunizations and durations and convexities and all of that so applying these things they give you a question and you apply that sometimes you need to integrate the concepts as well you can't learn the concepts in isolation you have to integrate those together most of the times to actually get the question right so i practiced for this exam when i was doing my internship last year because i i passed all of my two exams last year by the way so in august i wrote exam fm so june uh I, let's say okay i started practicing in july but i started studying for it around like april march a what uh sorry sorry april may june then i started practicing in july and i was writing on the 20 something of august so i started practicing when i started practicing i was very excited i was practicing 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 i reached level five I was doing my exams, I was flourishing. I reached level six. I reached, I think after I reached level five, I only took about three exams and I was already above a level seven. 
and i was like okay this is crazy am i just getting like questions that are more like the same and they do not really mimic the actual exam or am i really just doing well in my practices and so i talked to a lot of people who have taken the exam and they're like oh yeah um just keep doing the exams um keep taking them on level five level five exams mimic more of the actual exam the society of actuaries exam because i was using coaching actuaries so i kept doing level five exams and i was doing really well i was getting like 90s and above and i think that's because i really understood what i was doing so the first mistake that i did with p i didn't want to repeat it in fm that's a good thing sometimes with failing something is that you learn a lot from it and that you don't get to repeat it so with my exam fm experience i just had to really understand what i'm doing i had to learn in depth understand why are we doing this how do you do it why are we doing it this way can i do it the other way is the other way more effective so i'll experiment all of that when i'm doing my practices so by level five i was already getting 90 persons and above and then another thing my other trick is that i always try to take a sample exam from the society of actuaries website i think a week before i write so I went on their website and I took a sample exam and I think I got like 33 out of 35 because exam FM has 35 questions. So which means we have less time to spend on a question. So yeah, I took the SOA exam and I passed really well. And I think I took another one and I passed really well. And but I was still feeling not so confident. I was having a lot of anxiety. I think it's just something that comes with taking actuarial exams because I mean, they are a big deal, right? They are a big deal. But then again, it's one of those things where you can never really know if you are ready because you're doing independent studying and you don't know what will actually come in the exam, even though you have the syllabus and all of that. So like i'm there and i'm feeling so anxious i remember feeling really anxious even the night before i prayed with my friends like they prayed for me i read scriptures about fear and anxiety just to put my mind at ease but it was not easy um when i went in the exam i was really lucky because COVID was going on and everything so like i went in a room where i was the only one so i felt much more confident because you know normally you are in a big room surrounded by other people taking different exams but this time around i was like in my own room own computer and i was just doing my thing and i was just flourishing uh i passed it thank god i passed it and it was like something really huge for me I was feeling more confident to apply for my full-time job offers because i had a second exam passed it's it's a big deal so yeah and then after that i got my results in october and i passed with a nine which i was really excited for because they they rate it like from a one to a ten so ten is like really perfect perfect score i guess i think that's what a ten is then i a nine could be maybe you get one or two wrongs in the exam i don't know how they read it i really don't know because sometimes they have pilot questions as well pilot questions is just i think about three questions they put in the exam that may be really difficult or may not even be a part of the syllabus of the exam so they put them there deliberately most of the times i don't know if it's to test if it's maybe a question that could be used in the future or they just make it really hard for people to pass but they put pilot questions in the exam so sometimes if you're going through the exam um, my strategy is always like do all the questions i can do the moment i read a question because the normally the questions are really long so if i read the question and i feel like i can tackle this i don't have to think so much about it i can tackle this i know what to do then i do it and that's what i do if i encounter a question i have an idea of what to do it but i don't know where to start i leave it for a while so then the second round in my exam that's now when i tackle those kind of questions in that way you are making sure that you are answering the questions that you are confident about correct before time is up and saving the other ones for last even though like you maybe have an idea of how to solve them so these are all multiple questions all the questions in exam p and fm are multiple choice but they give you a lot of blank sheets and pencils because it requires a lot of working so also i don't know if that's tricky or good because you know with multiple choice questions they give you all possible answers you can get if you mess up something 
and i think that's the thing with p i felt like p was way too tricky um fm also had those tricks but i feel like p was way too tricky like they really put all those answers that you could get if you mess up a sign some way or if you 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 think about something from a different perspective than what they are asking for all these tricks that they use in the multiple choice questions but i personally i thought p was more tricky than fm and fm had those tricks as well but i thought that the questions were sweet they were straightforward and yeah i am going to write my third exam hopefully in july i've been starting for it but i've been going really slow on it as well just with graduation and preparing for that um, initially I wanted to take it in March, but I went home in December and I was being less productive. Um, so as a result, um, I decided to take it in July instead and July is when I start my full-time job. So it's going to be a combination of me moving, a combination of me writing or sitting for an exam and also starting a new job. So I'm looking forward to that, but I want to dedicate this time to actually continue to study and learning my concepts because with the, the third exam, which is the investment and financial markets exam, uh, it's heavy on conceptual stuff. It's a lot of knowing stuff, knowing formulas, knowing um about stocks and options and you know financial markets and all of that there's a lot of mathematics as well but it's not as heavy as in the fmnp exam but it requires you to really study 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 in depth and know the stuff because they're gonna ask you these questions and single confusion can make you fail the exam and like a simple confusion can make you fail an exam this exam so yeah um wish me luck and i'm looking forward to hearing from you guys what you think about exam p or fm if you have taken it already and if you haven't what else you would like to know more about it thank you guys for coming and yeah have a great one